Welcome to Elite Rainbow in the Dark. This is a quest that is dreaded by some, especially by newer players, uh, but even some older players, and uh, I love this quest, my favorite one out here, uh, but I hated it at first. I had kind of a traumatizing experience here as a noob uh, just a couple months into the game. I was out here with uh, a full group that I joined, a pug, and the guy, I think he, he seemed like he was a veteran player, but he thought it would be a good idea to have a noob who had never run this quest before hold the torch on Elite, so he's got me standing out front as this squishy wizard, and I'm just dying left and right. And I remember we actually wiped our first try. We got to the door uh, right before we got to the crest, and uh, as soon as that door opened, just the, the devils flooded in and just obliterated us. <laughs> it's kind of funny looking back. Um, so I avoided this quest for a long time after that, <laughs> but I do love it now. I did a lot of speed runs in here um, back in the day, and was able to get my time down to eight minutes. Tough to get below that. Can be done. I think I could probably get it down to about seven minutes uh, with the Winter Wolf Snow Slide, but that eight-minute barrier I tried to break back then, and I just could not do it, uh, even on a favored soul with wings. So. Uh, First thing I want to go over is enhancements because I did something a little bit different just just to show that you can do something different with this build if you want to in terms of where you're spending your action points. I got rid of everything from the human side just to show you that you can spend a lot of points in the Harper agent and there is nothing critical over here on the human side. It's just my preference. You know, I like some of these I like being able to cast greater heroism. I like don't count me out. I like the extra point of wisdom and con and you could even get still that you know, that extra point in there without having to, of, of wisdom work on, without having to spend a lot of points in here. Um, and the the healing amp is kind of nice too, but if you if you forego that, you can get a lot of good stuff over here too. You get the plus three to all skills, you know, so the skills over here, you're losing four to in, uh, intimidate, but you're gaining three to intimidate and three to all skills here, so that's very valuable. So I think that's a, it's, it's better to have plus three to all skills than plus four to intimidate, you know, and plus one to everything else. Uh, extra 100, uh, that's not reading correctly, it's actually an extra total of 100 spell points, energy resistance, extra hit points, um, 20 extra spell points here. Also, that's 3 universal spell power if you're using a weapon that's considered an, an implement, a spell casting implement. Here you get another plus 1 to universal spell power, extra point of charisma. Now, I do emphasize charisma on this build over intelligence. Charisma uh, amplifies your energy burst uh, DC. So when you get into epics and you're twisting an energy burst, here's some more universal spell power, and uh, you could even work up to to this, which is 30 points spent in tree, and get another 10 universal spell power. That's only eight more points. I've got 12 to go before I cap out at 80. So I could easily spend another, you know, 30, or excuse me, another. I guess it would be nine points total to get that. And here you've got 20 healing amp here, minus 10 from negative energy. Here's plus 4 to all your uh, wolf and summoned creatures' stats. So there's a lot of good things over here, and this is definitely uh, an option. And there are some more universal spell power uh, options in here as well. You get another point of charisma too. Uh, you can get uh, charisma or I believe it's dexterity or intelligence there. Uh, so something to consider, you know. Like I said, there's nothing critical over here, and all the important stuff uh, is has been purchased here, except the extra point of wisdom. Um, and then I'm, of course, going to get the SLA. Oh, which I could get now, because I'm level 18. Oops. Uh, I'll be picking that up after this, because I'm not keeping this. I'll respend. And then you want to get the hero fin at level 20. Yeah, the extra point of wisdom. It's like Something like Autumnal Sussurus, it's nice. You know, and you do get some... You know, every point spent in this tree is plus one to universal spell power. Uh, you can see it says right there at the top uh, in the text box here. So you know, you do have to consider that every point you pull out of here is minus one to your universal spell power. Uh, if you did decide to forego the human tree, uh, I would definitely recommend the action boost spell power here. Okay, enough of that. Uh, let's talk about gear for a minute. I uh, have my first page, uh, first bag here, filled up with some uh, 
some items that some of them I've just picked up uh, here at level 18. Some other things I just I, I wanted to mention. You know, this is supposed to be a TR guide and and some pieces of gear that you may not have thought about getting or picking up. Um, first of all, your Cormor's belt. This is absolutely critical. Whenever you want to harass your guildies, uh, you can use this to make them dance. And so uh, this is a, a wonderful piece of, uh, of of trolling gear. <laughs> this comes out of uh, I can't remember which Amrath quest, but you can also get it in Tower of Despair. I'm just joking, but I love that. I have it on all my tunes. I love to make my guildies dance. Uh, Mysterious Bobble, absolutely critical. I mean, this is a free major pot per rest. This comes out of the end chests in the weapon shipment in Amrath, and they've upped the drop rate. And they upped that a few weeks ago, I think, and I've already seen my guildies pull. You know, I just tonight... Oh, you could see in the text box. <laughs> my my guilty gin sickle there pulled one after he says after two years he finally got one. That's so awesome. Um, but some of my other guildies have been lucky, uh, been fortunate enough to pull one recently too. So go farm that on every casting tune that you have. Uh, now we got the owl bear whistle. This was a premium item that came from when you bought the expansion. I don't know if that's still available. I don't know if they're still giving that out if you buy the the second expansion, which was the. Uh, the Shadowfell Conspiracy. They give you a level 17 version and a level 25 version, I think it is. So it's nice to have that extra hireling, you know, when you need to guard the center in a challenge or to go grab a lever or something. Uh, this is a nice piece of uh, gear that I have on every tune because it's, it's, it's a free summon clicky and it has some really cool summons. This is the thing you... Uh, This is the thing where you see people pulling out those those beholders, the, the Zoriat beholders. Um, it does, you know, I got a mind flare, it's random. You, know, you get an evil eye, you can get a taken. Uh, the beholder is definitely, you know, the coolest one there is. I mean, how badass is it to have a beholder running around with, you know? But the, actually, the evil eye shoots uh, um, force bolts, which can be actually pretty valuable, and the evil eye can actually has some decent survivability. So uh, this comes out of uh, the Sane Asylum, and it's a very common drop. It's bound to account, so you can move it to your other tunes. So it's a neat, neat piece of gear. Actually, you know, if you're like a an enchantment focus, like wizard or something, um, that can actually be a p good piece of gear to wear, or, or you know, a sork. It's got enchantment focus too, and plus one exceptional charisma too. Uh, next up, I got some wands here. I like to have wand of protection from evil. That protects you from being commanded. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that protection from evil does protect you from certain uh, mental compulsions. A lot. And like I said, uh, including command. So if you're in a quest that you got mobs commanding you, you know, get that. You know, get, use that wand. Wand of shield. You got a, you know, a lot of mobs are hitting you with magic missiles, and that's irritating. Yeah, use the wand of shield to take care of that. And you've got the UMD with this build to be able to use wands of shield uh, tenth level. That lasts ten ten minutes. Pretty awesome. Uh, these unfortunately are not purchasable, but you can find them, so save them up, or maybe your guildies will give you some um, that they just have lying around. Uh, and if you don't have that available, you can always buy wands of uh, shield from the marketplace. They're level one wands, but they do pretty sure those last. I think those last five minutes. Those first level buffs have a minimum duration of five minutes now. Also, wand of knock is nice and handy to use for uh, chests and doors that don't have a high DC. And then I like to also carry wands of resist energy eleventh. Uh, just as a mana savings, you know, somebody needs a resist, and, uh, you know, this way you don't have to draw from your mana pool, you just hit them with a wand. Um, wands of, our scrolls of raised dead, very important. I've got a 100% chance to, uh, I'm going to put greater heroism on. Because I don't have greater heroism in my tree right now, I just, I picked up some scrolls for purposes of this quest only, so I just want to put that on there so to show what my UMD would be otherwise. So your uh, reincarnation on Druid's really slow, and when you're in a raid, you don't really want to spend you know six seconds casting that thing to, to raise people. Here you can just hit them quick with the with the raise dead scroll, um, teleport scrolls. I love it. I love being able to use those to get around. I have a 120% chance of using them now, so I get around really quickly. And even greater teleport scrolls. I'm already up to 80% chance, and you know a few more levels, I'll have a 100% chance to use those. And same with Scrolls of Resurrection. So I'll be I'll be abandoning the Raised Dead Scrolls here very shortly. 
and a couple more levels than just using Scrolls of Resurrection. I'll have over, well over 100% chance to use those by endgame, and same with Scrolls of Greater Restoration. Um, now, uh, want to make sure you realize that regeneration and mass regeneration does remove negative levels, but this again can be a nice mana savings. You know, you you got a you're in a raid and somebody's got negative levels, you can hit them with that instead of wasting your spell points by casting a regeneration on them. And this does uh, restore all negative levels, uh, as well as fatigue, exhaustion, confusion, uh, and I believe ability point damage. Yeah. Okay, moving on, I have a green steel uh, haste clicky that I have crafted. So this is a really nice, this is three charges of uh, a minute and 36 seconds haste. I love to have this. I don't wear that as a permanent item. It is not cleansed, so if I do, I just sit there and take damage. I'll, sh I'll demonstrate that. Uh, you can see that it has that taint of Shavaroth. Look at the bottom of this. It says taint of Shavaroth. You can't wear more than one green steel item. Now, weapons, uh, that doesn't apply to weapons. It is listed on weapons as the Taint of Shavroth here. If you look at my green steel, uh, well, let's look at this one. Uh, you can see Oh, I thought it did list Taint of... Okay, in any event, the Taint of Shavroth, you don't have to worry about weapons, but with other pieces of gear, like your goggles uh, and my, my helm, you can't wear two unless you use a cleansing stone that you get out of your 20th completions of shroud at the, for the end reward list. You can use that to remove the taint of Shabra, thus allowing you to wear multiple green steel items. You can wear one with a taint, but two with a taint, you're going to take damage like I'm ticking now. But taking, you know, one tick of damage while I use the haste clicky is no big deal, and I just switch it right back. I also have and uh, another scroll here is scroll of true seeing and this is instead of memorizing the spell and taking up that place in my spell book and using my own man my uh, spell points for that I just use it from the scroll just as a mana savings and so I don't have to use up that that slot again in the spell book so here uh, is a green steel triple air uh, and this I use this has a uh, electrical absorption 10 15 and 20 percent on it so mobs that have you're doing, you know, if you're in a zone or you know, a place, a quest or something that's you're taking a lot of electricity damage, you can pop this on, um, and to absorb so much of that, uh, and this can work in conjunction with like uh, a crafted 33% item here, or like your ring of the Jinn, for example. So I really the the reason why I crafted this is so that I can tank the Storm Reaver in Fall of Truth because he does so much electrical damage with his boom, and this is a big help. Also have a Oh, and this has three, another three haste clickies on it too. So now you've got six haste clickies. Uh, here is a uh, triple fire uh, green steel sword. This is similar to the one I just showed you, but this is for fire absorption. So this is something I would wear uh, like when I'm tanking uh, the dragons in fire on Thunder Peak. So, or any other zone where you're taking a lot of fire damage and you need to be able to survive that. Nyoka's necklace is a really nice necklace. It has three 15-minute uh, clickies of invisibility. This comes out of, I can't remember which Amrath quest, but again, it also drops in uh, the Tower of Despair raid. And there's a couple other items worth mentioning that I don't have on me now, but there's a there's a, the Draconic necklace, which has a greater heroism clicky that's level 18. And then there is a belt, there are actually a bunch of belts that have like greater uh, false life and con six on them. And uh, those are level 18 really really nice items uh, that's actually uh, lower than you can craft it would be a level 9 19 item to craft uh, con 6 and greater false life on an item uh, on the same item even with masterful craftsmanship so uh, but I just I'm not using it right now because I you know I have con 6 on the belt and then greater false life on the ring so just for my particular gear set but some really really nice items and they commonly drop out of the raid uh, and then lastly, uh, there's a point I wanted to mention. I talked about this in my last video, but with the wolf, uh, let's pull him up here. This has to do with the wolf armor. Now, I talked about that maximum dexterity bonus. Now, you can see on this one I have on, on him now, he's maximum dexterity bonus of 16. 
and he's got a dex bonus of 17 right now. So he's he's losing one of his you know points of dex in terms of armor class and saves. But um, actually, let this be a lesson to me because uh, what I should since I'm now level 18, what I should be doing is putting a shard or crafting a, a mobility onto this, which increases the maximum dex of the armor and this was the previous armor he was wearing for lower level and so what I had I had said that I just left it you know after I got it to plus five in vulnerability I didn't change it what I should have done as soon as I got to level 14 is put mobility onto that which would increase the maximum dexterity bonus which you can see right now is only 13 so at the time he had a dex of a bonus of plus 16 so he was losing out on three armor class um, so just wanted to emphasize that spells got some more level 9 spells uh, I picked up snow slide I really like that uh, that big burst of movement lets you jump over a large space uh, large expanses and uh, move really quickly when you need to let's see what else did I pick up uh, I think fire seeds is new this can be a throne or uh, a, a ranged version and then there's like a trap version kind of like delayed blast fireball where it puts it on the ground I don't use that version I've heard it can be decent I just I've never really it's just not my play style but uh, I do like to use the fire seeds once in a while like with the abbot uh, one of the things that's nice about fire seeds is that it has a really long range so you can like hit a beholder with it from outside of their anti-magic uh, field uh, but this is a conjuration spell, and I don't carry heighten on this build, so my saves are never really that good with it, anyways. But it can be nice, especially like if you're spamming too. But I do, I don't use it that often. I don't have it hotkeyed. That's how infrequently I use it. And I should be carrying cold spray, which is a, a debuff that you could put on a mob to make them take more damage from your cold spells. Uh, so I, that's something I need to change out. Uh, as soon as I can. I really only use that for like bosses. Okay. Okay, the wolf is going home. You know, even in quest where you, I, he's just going to get into too much trouble here, but even in quest where you don't use your wolf, one of the things you can do is you can get in the habit of just parking your wolf at the start because if you if you get in trouble, you die, you can call your wolf to you, have him grab your soul stone he can pick it up and then you can sort of run with him run dead uh, to the shrine and you know when, when you're running while you're dead you just keep calling him to you and so you basically are having him take your soul stone to a shrine so that's uh, that can be handy but I'm not gonna need him for this one okay you come here and here's the torch the radiant arc and we're gonna set that up in the equipment to the weapon set here and it's not a bad little weapon because your arch magi potency 56 it's metaline um, whatever this isn't a melee build anyways but that allows you to see without it it's very dark You used to be able to use like your favorite souls archon or even the summon monster. I think it's summon monster four, where you could summon an, a lantern archon. They they could light up the area too. Uh, I've heard that shadow walk can give you some illumination, but that's just for yourself. But now I don't think there's really any good way to to light things up since the archons don't work, other than the torch itself. So only one person can carry that, so usually you want to stay together, because otherwise you just get lost in the dark. So here we're just going to stand here and let everybody burn up in our aura of awesomeness. If you ever want to melee, uh, the uh, rust monsters here, I do recommend getting into a wolf form. Your, your weapons won't take any damage while you're in wolf form. Alright, we're going to put on the 
uh, spell absorption because if this beholder gets us with his anti-magic stuff, uh, we won't get debuffed. Let's see if we can one-shot him. Hell yeah! Call lightning for the win. Now here, there can be a button, and there it is. And sometimes you come here with bugs, and you're like, "Don't step on the button, because the world will end." Um, I actually like to hit it because so often somebody hits it anyways, and then if somebody does it by accident, then maybe you're not all together, and you know. It's some noob and he dies. And then you lose 10% 10 10 XP. So I'd rather hit it and deal with it on my own terms than have like a hireling or a wolf or something walk on it or, you know, somebody not paying attention walk onto it by accident. And then I like to just clear over to the door because there are gonna, when, once we come back here, there are going to be more mobs, and so uh, this way I'm just not having to deal with twice as many mobs. And I'm just going to let them burn up in the aura. Yep. Pretty awesome. Like those those uh, scorpions there will animate, and there's some devils and things. Stepping on the button a second time doesn't do anything. There's also some traps around here that are random. Uh, you can spot them if you are on a trapper, uh, or if you have high spot, I guess. Um, I'm gonna go here just for purposes of the video. I don't normally go this way. Most groups don't. This is gonna lead to the. Oh, uh, and those those traps I'm referring to are the traps that. Uh, it's like a blue ring that appears and it pulls you down into a pit where you have to kill uh, four or eight fire elementals to get out of there. Okay, so uh, if you do this little clock puzzle, you can potentially get a couple extra chests, but it's random. So you pull these in a certain order, and then, you know, if you do it right, you get there. You get the chest. But, and there can be some traps back here, too, and the boxes will be over here somewhere. Uh, but it's random, so most people just skip it. And if, if you get it wrong, a pit opens up, and you fall through a bunch of spikes. And if you have people with 200 hit points on Elite, they're going to die. And then you go through a tunnel, which which ends up coming out at the same place we're going now, which is where the crest is. I don't think that you can get... Don't quote me on this, but I don't think that you can get... Oh, here's one of those traps I was referring to. Your maximum kill bonus uh, in this quest, because I feel like I tried that once. I tried to just kill everything, and you can't do it. Kill one wave, and sometimes there's another wave. Yep. And you get teleported back up. I think they fixed this, but again, don't quote me on this. But if you, if it used to be the case that if somebody got sent down there, and and the whole party wouldn't get taken down there necessarily, uh, and you disabled the trap while they were down there, they couldn't get out. There was no way for them to get out other than, unless they had D door or they were to recall out and re-enter. <laughs> so I, th I think that is fixed. We don't worry about big mobs like this. That's just a water elemental form, and uh, we'll do a little, do a little uh, earthquake action there. We're gonna throw it all down. 
the whole thing. These mobs don't have a chance. I feel bad for them. So if you had done the clock puzzle and failed and you went down that, that tunnel, you'd come out. There's an opening right there. You'd come out right there. Now we get the crest. A lot of people will detour if they have it and run back from the start. Uh, it's a little bit quicker doing it that way, but it doesn't take much longer this way. There are going to be some respawns here. Or some... They're not, I guess they're not really respawns, but they're mobs that spawn after the crest is taken. And we're just going to kite them. Just because it's more fun that way. And more efficient. Remember, when it comes to dungeon alert, if it ain't red, we ain't dead. And if you're not dying, you're not trying. Here it comes, the boys. And you get your own personal hurricane here. Druids are walking natural disasters. I love them. Here, I don't know if I'm going to be able to see it. No, but there's a, this is a secret passage there. It's just uh, another gelatinous cube there. And uh, around the corner is another secret passage. And you, I think you need to get those to get like your observance bonus. I'm not even sure about that. Just can't remember. When I was in Water Alley form there, I, I don't even have Mantle of the Icy Soul yet, I just didn't memorize it. And another trap. You can see the blue ring appear right before I came down here. And this time it was just one round. But I... Uh, a trapper can spot those and disable them. There you got your one shrine of the quest. So here there's another secret wall which you could open up from this side or the other side. And again there's just a little a little room with a gelatinous cube. If you listen closely here, this DM, uh, and I think he does it in Sands of Menectron too, he's the same guy, 
When he says gnolls, if you listen closely, he actually pronounces the G's and says gnolls. Not quite as hard as I just pronounced it. But uh, you can hear the G, it's funny. So this is an optional list away. Double shot, dot, or uh, excuse me, the word of balance SLA there just um, got a double proc off it because that caster must have been two steps away from neutrality. These uh, scorpions are kind of quirky. A lot of times they don't want to come out of that little alcove. Well, this time they are. Somebody just grab the key and leave, and they don't even follow you. They can actually turn you to stone. So that can be a little scary sometimes. Depending on your group and your build. And then there's... a. Uh, that key you have to get. This is the optional here. There's a beholder down here. Earth elementals cannot be affected by your earthquake, but they can be blinded. Put on the spell absorption, fresh uh, Springs Resurgence there. Let's get a new aura going. Let's see if we can hit him with a Creeping Cold. Yep. He'll be stone dead in a moment. You can see the Iron Stone there ticking away as he's hitting me with spells. 35 charges left. So one Creeping Cold wasn't enough to take him out. I hit him with a Call Lightning and another Greater Creeping Cold. He's dead. And we never lost our boss because of the spell absorption. Those traps that suck you down into the pit with the fire elementals, those are one-time deals, so once you complete them, you don't have to worry about hitting them again. And if you see, you know, if you're behind the group and you see them get sucked into it, you can jump into it real quick to help them out. I believe the blue ring persists the entire time they're down there. If not, it persists for at least a little bit. Can't remember. It's the only Veil of Twilight quest that I haven't done a video on so far. I think I was saving it for this final life to do a video on it. Today I just posted my 100th video and it was the the final leveling video of the True First Life series. <laughs> this video probably won't even go up for like two months. Gives you an idea how far ahead I am. I have so many videos. And then after the True First Life series, I have like a half a dozen or so just odds and ends videos that I'm going to put up before uh, I start doing this series. <laughs> okay, so this is a dreaded part for, uh, by a lot of people because there's uh, 
it's really hard to see. Uh, dancing balls can illuminate this a little bit, by the way. It's a pit of spikes, and then there are these like round pedestals all around here that you can jump from pedestal to pedestal to get across the other side. Now, you, there's a, a trap on the middle one, which is right in front of me, very, very hard to see right now. Uh, but you don't want to jump onto that one because there is a trap there. Uh, it can be disarmed, and so you just get onto this next uh, pedestal right here, and you can disarm the trap from here. So a lot of people fall, and if you have low hit points, you're going to die. These these spikes hit pretty hard, but here's the trick. If you got a good jump, somebody here has a jump spell, now on this first pedestal, you can just walk onto. You don't have to jump on there. You don't really need Mario skills here like a lot of people think. You just walk onto it, and from here, you jump straight to the other side if you have a good jump. You don't have to go from pedestal to pedestal, so you just walk onto this one and jump all the way to the other side. And even if your jump isn't that good, if you're aiming right, you'll hit this pedestal uh, and just walk to the to the to the end. Uh, or if you are sort of get, have an in-between jump, you can catch the ledge here and get up. So that's not really as scary as a lot of people think. It's a lot easier than most people realize. Oh, commanded. That was his final F you before he killed me. Oh, here's another button. We're going to deal with it on our own terms instead of having some noob or our wolf trigger it. That way you get more kills. But like I said, I don't think you can get... Um, I always forget the names of them. It's not Onslaught. But I don't think you can get maximum kill bonus here. Now, if you wanted to just go straight to the end, you're going to go that way. End is just up ahead, but there's another optional here that I'm going to show you. I'm not going to be able to do it, but you do want to point out like where, how it works. Five forty three and six seventeen was the double tick on the word of balance. Not too bad at levels at uh, level eighteen. Okay, so in this little room you got a secret wall here. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna be able to see it. Curse you. Curse you, turbine, for changing the way choosing works on detecting secret doors. Okay, well, so there's an extra chest here, and there are three trap boxes, which I'm not going to be able to show you their exact locations, but the first two are basically just inside of here. You don't want to go too far because the trap, the trigger, the, the floor will fall out, you won't be able to get to the chest. So just maybe 10 feet in from here, there's a trap box on the left wall and the right wall. Okay, and then just beyond that, that's actually to disable some blade traps. And then just beyond that, on the right, just beyond where the blade traps were, there's another trap box. So two trap boxes on the right wall, one on the left. And one's a little bit further than those first two that are across from each other. And then you do both of those, you get to the chest at the end of the hall, and that chest is locked, so you need a lock picker for that. Or knock. Or bell of opening. But it's just junk loot. Seven twenty on a produce flame. I love it. I wish the spell was a little bit faster though. Really, they should they should increase the speed of that spell to about what magic missile is, because it is kind of laughably slow right now. But it can still be a very. I just hit for eleven hundred for two spell points. Very effective spell. Obviously, I've demonstrated that in my video. There are times you know you got mobs that are moving around fast. It's not going to be so effective, but there are very valuable times to use it too. Okay, a little puzzle here, if you don't know how to use it. Yeah, uh, you need to light the uh, the lights here in the pattern of a rainbow. Uh, and some of you know the little uh, uh, acronym 
Roy G. Biv. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. That is the, the spectrum of the rainbow. Uh, and so, the, some it, the, and the way they're lit up when you get here is random. Sometimes, you know, some, some of them are lit, and sometimes none of them are lit. So, I'm going to get it. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to reset it, because most of the time you come here, none of them are lit. So what I want to show you is sort of a kind of a quick way to do it. So uh, if they were not lit up at all, like this is the way you know, 80% of the time you come here, it's going to be like this. You light them all up. Uh, and then you're going to go back over them, so you're you're missing that last one. The last one's staying red. Now you're going to go over all but that last orange one. And then you're going to go back up over all of them again. And now you're going to leave that last green one. And back over them all again. And then just hit this first one. So each time you're going like one less. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. That's not very blue, is it? It's like cyan. Stick the uh, torch in the thingy dingy there. Don't forget to re-equip your main weapon set. Water elemental form here, so we can take out uh, Turan Palo more effectively. Which I guess his name is a reference to some like big fire somewhere that like killed a bunch of people a long time ago. Pardon my ignorance, but you can look it up if you really want to look at the the trivia and the nature of his name. He doesn't like it or keeping cold. Hey, thanks for watching. If you have any questions about my videos, you can respond on YouTube. And if you have any questions about my build, you can respond on the DDO forums in the Druid section. And if you are on Sarlona, you are welcome to send me a tell.